8.45. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Here is the news. Edited by Danushka Madhavala and read by Indrani Senanayaka. The headlines. President advocates for modernizing the legal system in national economic transformation. A committee tasked with ensuring the respectful handling of final rights for individuals to be established. Society undergoing conceptual shift regarding individuals with special needs. Minister Nalin Fernando says that an estimated price range will be implemented for retail sales. Sri Lanka and Estonia successfully conclude inaugural bilateral political consultations. A meeting was held between the Air Force Commander and the IGP. In foreign news, Palestinians return to Khant Yunis as troops leave city. President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized the importance of modernizing the legal system to effectively implement the government's program aimed at fostering rapid economic growth in the country. He made these remarks during a cordial gathering with lawyers in Kandy held at the Mahaveli Reach Hotel yesterday. Highlighting the collaboration with the International Monetary Fund as a crucial step towards revitalizing Sri Lanka's economy, President Vikramasinghe underscored the necessity of legalizing the agreements with the IMF to ensure that the benefits reach the people swiftly. Moreover, the President expressed plans to introduce a new legal framework geared towards modernizing across various sectors. He sought the support of the legal community for these initiatives, emphasizing the significance of their involvement in advancing these efforts. Addressing the gathering, President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized the critical decision facing Sri Lanka regarding its program with the International Monetary Fund. Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe announced that a new committee would be established to coordinate arrangements for the last rights of individuals in accordance with their religious customs or the final wishes, including those within the Muslim community. He also expressed his commitment to enacting relevant legislation in the future. These remarks were made during his attendance at the iftar ceremony held yesterday at the Juma Mosque in Katugale, Kandy. Social Empowerment State Minister Anupa Pascal said that the phrase Kana Muttia Bindima and Andeata Kiri Kavima has been updated to Vasana Muttia Bindima and Sagayata Kiri Kavima. This alteration announced in the context of New Year celebrations is intended to foster a conceptual shift in society regarding differently abled individuals. The State Minister highlighted that all banks under the Samurdi program have coordinated to organize 1,089 New Year celebrations across the country for the Sinhala and Hindu New Year. State Minister Pascal made these remarks during a press briefing titled Collective Path to a Stable Country held at the President's Media Center today. Minister Nalin Fernando says that an estimated price range will be implemented for retail sales. This measure has been taken to avoid high profits made by the middlemen in trading. The aim of the government is to provide essentials for the public without any shortage. Prices of the essential commodities will be publicized every Tuesday with the support of the Sri Lanka Customs and Satosa. The minister made these remarks at a press briefing held at the Ministry of Trade today. IGP Deshabandhu Tennakon visited Army Headquarters Complex in Akuregoda today. The IGP met the Air Force Commander, Air Vice Marshal Udeni Rajapaksha. The Air Force Commander congratulated Mr. Tennakon on his appointment as the IGP. This news comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> People's Bank Excelsior. Live the life you want. We continue with local news. 
Sri Lanka and Estonia convened the inaugural bilateral political consultations at senior official level on the 4th of this month in Colombo. The consultations focused on consolidating bilateral relations and identifying new areas for cooperation between the two countries. Potential for both public and private sector collaborations in ICT and e-governance, with the high point of the discussion as Estonia is renowned for its expertise in these sectors. A memorandum of understanding in e-governance is being negotiated between the two countries for further consolidating the partnership. The discussion also considered strengthening collaboration in green development, tourism, education, technical assistance and capacity building. The two sides exchanged views on cooperation at multilateral fora, developments in their respective regions and current global issues. They reiterated a shared commitment to upholding the values of freedom, democracy and the rule of law. Rear Admiral Ravi Ralasinghe was appointed as the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Sri Lanka Navy, effective from the 4th of this month. The Commander of the Navy, Vice Admiral Priyanta Pereira, formally handed over the letter of appointment to Rear Admiral Ravi Ralasinghe at the Navy headquarters today and expressed his best wishes to the newly appointed Deputy Chief of Staff. Rear Admiral Ravi Ralasinghe is a product of Anand College, Colombo. He joined the engineering branch of the Sri Lanka Navy as an officer cadet on the 19th intake in 1989. That ends the local segment of news. People's Bank Excelsior, a comprehensive banking services package with a branded checkbook as well as debit and credit card exclusively for you. People's Bank Excelsior, for professionals who dare to dream. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Paveda Mahatma. The President's Fund is in the final stage of providing scholarships to 6,000 economically disadvantaged students who passed the GCE Ordinary Level Examination in 2022-23. Payments for outstanding installments from March and April 2024 will be paid together with the May payment. Starting March 2024, recipients will receive 24 monthly installments of 6,000 rupees each. The list of selected students will soon be published on the official website and further details can be accessed through the President's Fund official Facebook page. Additionally, the application period for the Presidential Scholarship Program, which caters to 100,000 students from Grade 1 to Grade 11 with economic difficulties, has ended. The list of scholarship recipients is expected to be received by the President's Fund at regional level next month. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamatna. Watch Life is brought to you by CIB Navio Offer. Valuable gifts and gift vouchers, 25% discount for bank cards till 10th of April. Visit CIB today. CIB revives once always. Deputy Director of CID's Computer Crimes Investigation Division, SSP, Dashika Radasinghe said that the Computer Crimes Investigation Division of the Criminal Investigation Department has received 5,243 complaints in 2023. She added that her division had received over 1,500 complaints by the third week of March 2024 and the use of digital devices has increased. And along with that, the number of cyber crimes too had gone up. CIB Navio offer valuable gifts and gift vouchers, 25% discount for bank cards till 10th of April. Visit CIB today. CIB revives once always. Coming up, world news. First to the headlines, Palestinians return to Count Yunus as troops leave city. Hong Kong makes largest ever gold smuggling bust. Millions prepare for total solar eclipse in North America. Palestinians describe returning to homes with hardly anything left in the devastated city of Count Yunus. Israel says it is reducing the number of soldiers in southern Gaza, but stresses a significant force will remain in the north. The pullout is being intercepted as tactical rather than a sign the war may be moving closer to its end. Khan Yunus has been under Israeli bombardment for months. 
The city and surrounding areas are largely destroyed. Meanwhile, international pressure for a ceasefire is mounting as negotiations between Israel and Hamas continue in Cairo. The U.S. warned last week that its ongoing support for Israel was dependent on specific uh, concrete steps to boost aid and prevent civilian deaths. Hong Kong authorities have made the city's largest ever gold smuggling bust, seizing 146 kilos of the precious metal disguised as machine parts. The haul is estimated to be worth more than 10 million US dollars and was intercepted last month en route to Japan. A 31-year-old man has been arrested and released on bail pending further investigations. Smuggling is a serious offence and carries up to seven years in jail under Hong Kong law. Customs officials say they made the discovery while examining two air compressors departing in a cargo ship to Japan on the 27th of March, which drew suspicions due to their unusual texture and weight. An examination ultimately found both were riddled with gold that had been moulded and camouflaged into parts such as gears, crews and motor cores. A total solar eclipse where the moon fully blocks the sun will be seen across parts of North America today. It will begin over the Cook Islands in the Pacific Ocean and then move across Mexico and the 13 U.S. states before finishing in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. In the eclipse's path of deepest shadow totality, the sky will go pitch black for four minutes and nine seconds. NASA says this eclipse is unique as it will cover several densely populated cities with some 31.5 million people able to see it. NASA will conduct many experiments throughout the cosmic event, including launching rockets into the eclipse's shadow and sending research jet planes to track its path. To end this bulletin of world news, the headlines again. Palestinians return to Khan Yunus as troops leave city. Hong Kong makes largest ever gold smuggling bust. Millions prepare for total solar eclipse in North America. And that ends this bulletin of world news. We now take a look at development news. Gross official reserve assets of the central bank reaches the highest levels in more than three years in March as authorities managed to rebuild the country's foreign currency buffer to 4,951 million US dollars up from 4,520 million US dollars a month ago. This gradual recoup was possible mainly from the dual inflows from both remittances and tourism, both of which have reached pre-pandemic levels in a largely normalized economy. Moving on with sports news. Sri Lanka women's captain Chambari Atapattu said that she will take a decision on her international cricketing future after the conclusion of the T20 World Cup qualifiers next month. East London, where Sri Lanka will play South Africa in the first of three ODIs tomorrow, she said that she hasn't decided on retirement. Atapattu, who is... 34 and is due to play her 100th ODI for Sri Lanka in the upcoming series, raised concerns over her playing future with a couple of cryptic Facebook posts over the last week. On Thursday, after Sri Lanka secured a historic first T20 International Series win over South Africa, Atapattu put up pictures of herself and the trophy and included the words, Last duty for my country in the cap." She had uh, since removed the face from the post, and that was sports news. Go ekakiana youth at a life cricket change at a near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, the Kapuina, Habakarana, youth at a near meta set trainer, friendship at a mena. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business news. Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. 
The Ministry of Agriculture and Plantation Industries recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Unilever Private Limited to implement a joint program to protect Sri Lanka's tea sustainable tea name in the international market. Under the patronage of the Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries, Mahinda Amarweera, the signing of the MOU under the name of Public Private People's Partnership Program for the Sustainable Plantation Sector was done at the Ministry of Plantation Industries. The primary objectives of signing this MOU are to strengthen the tea industry in Sri Lanka and to produce tea with accepted standardization for the international market. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go Ekakiana, you ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for again, the Kapuina, Habakarana, you ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship meta mena. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am a plan for your dream. And now we take a look at economic news. Sri Lanka's tourism revenue passed the 1 billion US dollar mark after the first three months ending March 31st, 2024, showing a 103% growth against the corresponding period in 2023. Sri Lanka also recorded 635,784 arrivals for the first three months of 2024, also showing an 89% increase as against 2023. From January to March, March 2023, the total earnings from tourism receipts were 503 billion US dollars. Meanwhile, the workers' remittances also showed a sharp upward trend, with the country recording 1.5 billion US dollar revenue. Weather report. And finally, we take a look at the weather report. Showers or thunder showers will occur at a few places in the western Savaragamo and southwestern provinces and in the Kandy, Nuarelia, Gaul and Martha districts after 2 p.m. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the western, central, Uva and Savaragamo provinces and in the Gaul and Martha districts during the morning hours. The general public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damage caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during thunder showers. On the apparent northward relative motion of the sun, it is going to be directly over the latitudes of Sri Lanka during the 5th to the 15th of April this year. The nearest areas of Sri Lanka over which the sun is overhead tomorrow are Maravilla, Potohara, Gurgeta, Kalmune, Gartavela and Varakapitiya at about 12.12 12 noon. To end tonight's news broadcast, we take a look at the headlines again. The President advocates for modernizing the legal system in national economic transformation. A committee tasked with ensuring the respectful handling of final rights for individuals to be established. Society undergoing conceptual shift regarding individuals with special needs. Minister Nalin Fernando says that an estimated price range will be implemented for retail sales. Sri Lanka and Estonia successfully conclude inaugural bilateral political consultations. A meeting was held between the Air Force Commander and the IGP. In foreign news, Palestinians return to Khan Yunis as troops leave city. That ends tonight's news broadcast. The time reads three and a half minutes past nine o'clock. This is Radio Sri Lanka. <laughs> 